Hello, my name is Ajan John and today I am going to discuss with you how to answer the question should we retire at the official retirement age of 65. Let me remind you if you are listening to this on YouTube you can click on subtitles or transcript and you should be able to see my words printed. I will repeat words or phrases which I think may be difficult. In this talk I am going to show you how to answer this particular question but also I am going to show you a very good strategy for answering all essay questions in TOEFL and IELTS which I guarantee will get you the highest marks. If you're looking for 8 plus in IELTS or over 110 in TOEFL. This is the strategy you should follow. So firstly I recommend that we have four paragraphs. Introduction, second paragraph supporting your point of view, third paragraph giving the opposite point of view and then conclusion which may just be one sentence. Now at this stage when we are thinking about how to answer the essay question the most important thing and I cannot emphasize this enough I cannot emphasize this enough empathize E-M-P-H-A-S-I-S-E that you should be looking for the simplest way to answer the question by using maybe one idea and one example to support the argument and one idea to refute the argument. Refute, R-E-F-U-T-E. -E. Let me explain why I think this. What many students will do when they see this question is they will start thinking about all of the reasons why we should or should not retire at 65. So in support of retirement they might think well firstly people deserve to have a long break to pursue the leisure activities and things they have not been able to do while they were working. They may think that people are too old, they don't have the intelligence and skills to do their jobs they may think that the old should retire to give way to the young because the young do not have jobs. These and many other reasons the writer may think of at this stage. On the opposite side, why we should not retire. Maybe for example we might be too bored. Maybe we don't have enough money. Maybe we enjoy our jobs very much. So you can see there are many reasons you can give to support either retiring or not retiring. However, what you do not want to do is try to describe all of these. This is the very worst thing to do. What you want to do is to choose one and then go into great detail with one example in detail. This is going to be the best way to demonstrate your English which is the objective of your essay. The objective of your essay is not to demonstrate how clever you are at answering the question, but to demonstrate how good your English is. And to do this, you do not want to try to spend too much time and mental energy trying to explain all the different reasons why people should or should not retire. Remember that in TOEFL and IELTS we are writing essays to prove our English. Compared with say SAT or GMAT where when you write an essay you are trying to show your intellectual skills, your ability to think logically, logically, L-O-G-I-C-A-L-L-Y and critically critically, C-R-I-T-I-C-A-L-L-Y. 
this is a really common mistake students make. They think they're writing an essay for GMAT where they have to show how clever they are at, at answering the question and they get into trouble while doing this. I'm now going to show you how if you just choose one reason and one example you're going to be able to show a much higher level of English. So let's look at the introduction first. The purpose of the introduction is to describe the topic in the question and to begin to show how you are going to answer the question. So the topic in the question is retirement. So we need to describe what we mean by retirement. So here is a model answer for the introduction. Society's working model in most countries is that we work 8 to 10 hours a day, 5 days per week. And we do this throughout our lives until around the age of 65 or so. During our working lives we are expected to have accumulated enough money to be able to live without working during our later years. Many people look forward to retirement. They see it as a time to do all the things they were not able to do during their working years and a time to spend the money they have saved. Other people, however, may see it as the beginning of a slow and painful journey towards their grave. Towards their grave. Now we can move on to paragraph 2, which is going to be our main paragraph. And in this paragraph, I am going to support continuing to work, not retiring. Let me also point out at this stage, it's not necessary to give your opinion in the first paragraph. In fact, it's not necessary to give your opinion at all. You can just give both points of view and your supporting information. So, second paragraph. Here's a model answer. And I'm going to focus on the one idea that retirement is too boring. People don't want to retire because it's boring. I'm not going to discuss money or other reasons why people should not retire. I think the main reason why most people should not retire at 65 is because life would just be too boring. While people are young, they have many exciting ideas and adventures they want to pursue, pursue before they die. But when you get old, Unfortunately, many of these ideas have disappeared and work can often be the most exciting thing to do. Now here I'm going to give the example. My uncle, for example, is a surgeon. surgeon. Last year he decided to retire when he reached the retirement age of 65. And I remember he was really excited with all the plans he had for what he was going to do after this. The first thing he planned was to take a luxurious cruise around the world, visiting all the exciting and exotic, exotic countries he had never been to before. However, he had only been on the cruise around two weeks when he sent me an email saying he was bored out of his mind. Bored out of his mind. Notice here I have introduced the past perfect tense. He had only been on the cruise two weeks. You should try to do this in your storytelling. This is going to get you a higher grade. Let's continue with the story. He said that he was bored with the conversation all the other guests just spent all their time talking about silly soap operas, silly soap operas and their medical ailments, medical ailments, A-I-L-M-E-N-T-S. By the third week, my uncle had had enough, had had enough and decided to cancel the rest of his cruise and return to work. He went back to the hospital where he had worked most of his life and begged, B 
B-E-G-G-E-D, his boss to give him his old job back. So unfortunately, I think for many people, retirement is not the best time of life to enjoy yourself. It may well, it may well be better to continue in the job where you have developed skills, social contacts, and a way of giving satisfaction and meaning to your life. So that was our main paragraph, and as you can see, I have just used one idea. Retirement is boring. And one example, my uncle taking the cruise and cancelling the rest of his journey. Now let's do the third paragraph. This needs only be a much shorter paragraph, and you don't have to give an example here. So let's begin. On the other hand, some people find that there is no shortage, no shortage of interesting and exciting things to do after they retire. They may want to take up gardening, do more reading, or listen to music. And for these people, retirement may be the best option. So that, that should be okay for the third paragraph. Very short, but that's uh, perfectly okay. Now the conclusion. I always recommend a neutral one sentence conclusion for every essay. For example, in conclusion, for people who have a whole range of interests and activities to occupy their time, retirement may well be the best option. However, for many people, continuing to work may be more rewarding. So that's a, an example of the conclusion sentence, just one sentence, again neutral, giving both points of view. It's not necessary to give uh, a strong point of view in an essay. So if you follow that basic strategy, the most important thing is you do not want to spend time trying to think of how to answer the question you want to spend time thinking of how to use good vocabulary and grammar to describe your topic. So you can see in paragraph 2 how I have used a wide range of grammar and vocabulary talking about boredom and my uncle. And this is going to get you the highest marks in any English exam. Okay, thank you for listening. I'm hoping this has been very helpful. And for my students doing assignments with me, good luck with your next assignment.